Hey Quinn, I'm the Smoky Point here. Today we're going to do a little maintenance on Marine Jet Power's Ultra Jet 340 HTs that I have in this beautiful boat here. And I got them off the boat right now, so let's take a look at them. What we're going to do is we're going to put in the 1,000 hour maintenance kit, and what that what that does is changes out some of those anodes and the grounding and bonding cables, the earth earth kit, uh, the pivot point for the steering nozzle, the um, steering rod and some bushings so we'll be changing out this stuff here send me the rods for the 340 ht these are the 340 hts and i see some of the other folks around here that have the same ones i do if you are ordering the thousand hour kit make sure that you go for the hts not the hts or depending on which one you have order the right one first thing i'm going to do is uh, swap out this cone anode down in there, and for that I need a 19 millimeter. Huh. Well, that was that was easy. Isn't just gonna come out of there. Sorry, the yard guys are making a bunch of racket here. Hopefully, you can still hear hear this. Um. So I went up and got a gear puller. I think that's what I'm gonna need. So I just got to move one of these uh, arms over to here. Then you'll be able to grab that and march it right off. A little dillying around, I got that puppy to hook on two tines. Okay, that's what you need is a little uh, gear puller. Okay, now that we got that one off, we'll, this one will go right in there somehow. like that. Permatex thread locker. Medium strength. Little dabble do ya. Alright, we got that part done. Trying to make a movie here. Now these things don't last forever. Uh, you gotta change them out because they uh, they corrode. They're sacrificial, right? So if you don't have these, then this starts corroding, and that's no bueno. Obviously, these cost way less. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pull off these other zincs here um, off the bottom and change out some of these uh, bonding cables. Here, look at this. This one's pitted, pitted something terribly. Um, and of course, uh, what we always do is put this splash zone on here to cover up the studs so the web doesn't catch on them and, and on the bottom of that pivot pin as well. So um, I had one of the deckhands take off some of those other ones, but move on to taking these off. Okay. So that's how it is, how easy it is to change out one of those. We got several to do here. probably go for a little while longer on something like that but I mean it better uh, to have more surface area uh, fresher zinc than have it start corroding in into your your high dollar unit here that's for sure let's uh, we'll take this off and change that cable out 17 millimeter Let's take this one off here too as well. What is that? There, there it is right there. Put that puppy on. There we go. Is that puppy? Okay. There's that. Um, you know, and these guys, to tell you the truth here, I already changed these out. And I'm not taking this back off because this guy is um, a little galled up. It's got a little mar on it. And the more I mess with this, I'm going to have to put a die on that and clean those threads up. So I did that when the camera was off. Sorry about that. But, I mean, you get, you get it. Tight. This guy goes back to there. going on with this stud here it doesn't go in easy I'm not gonna drive it in with that 
that rattle gun. It'll just cause me problems later if I, if I force it. Finesse is the key to success. Okay. Let's, uh, do I get those, get those? I mean, that was clickety split. Um, obviously there's one more here, um, but I am down one of these. So I decided to split them up and put some on that one and put some on this one. And so we'll have to get a replacement for that. So what I did here earlier was knock some of that corrosion off with a file. Changed out uh, one, two, three of those straps. So this little unit here, these are the shortest pieces. And this really isn't, you know, convenient to have it that short. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these other ones that I took off the uh, tailpipe and use it in, instead over here, rather than the brand new ones that are the same exact length. So, um, and there's one that goes on this side as well. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I think if you probably wanted to make your own, you know, um, another just as little as a half inch longer would be best for that thing. But you know, I'm just going to swap that out there and make it a lot easier when I go to put this thrust tail pipe back on. Um, these longer ones will be better here for sure. That's that's super easy to change out zinc. Most people have done that at least once. If you've been in the fishing business at all for very long. Now we're going to take this bushing out of here. I didn't need that anymore. Okay, so the boys at the shop said just throw a little uh, RTV. Obviously, it doesn't need to be high temp, just something to hold it in place. I'm just gonna grab a little of that. A little pinch between the cheek and gum. And this guy, I'm gonna go right in there. This looks like an accident waiting to happen here. Boom, like a glove. Little used a little more of that uh, sealant than I needed, but whatevs. Okay, that's two things down. Move on to the we'll move on to the next. Okay, so we're down in the engine room of the Smoky Point, and I'm going to start taking apart the steering linkage so I can get that steering shaft out and replace the seal in there that's part of the 1,000 hour maintenance package. Here, here it is, right here. So this is that. There's the shaft there, and it, I got to pull it out. So I got to take. Uh, the, this steering components apart here. The seal is back in, in this little housing, I, I believe. So we're gonna figure that out uh, together. Let's get a little light on the subject here. So there's a little, little goo on that. I need a, a kid to yell at to hold my light for me. This is a 17 millimeter. I don't know who invented these ratcheting wrenches, but they deserve a raise. This thing comes right off. So I should probably mark that, which side is which here. So I got the, the, the linkage all apart here, and now I need to go back on the outside of the boat, and there's four studs going in to pull this, this thing out. Um, and the bolts or the, the nuts are on the outside. So if I loosen those up, it should be able to pull it off in, into the boat here. You see these are the studs that are holding this uh, shaft in and we're gonna pull those nuts off and hopefully it just goes smooth like butter. These ones are 17 millimeters as well. I think that whole unit is loose now. You can see it moving around there. There's an insulating washer on there. That's good. Back into the engine room and we'll pull that whole unit out of there. Oh, so this little guy's got to come out of there. That's holding the whole show on is what it looks like. The 10 millimeter, that's too big. Oh no, that's the right size. I don't know that this needs to come off, honestly, but I can't see behind it, so I'm gonna continue to take it off regardless. Quarter turn at a time, you know the feeling. Sounded like something just fell out of here. Oh, yeah, there was a washer with it. That's what fell out of there, great. Good lock down there. 
Okay, well, it doesn't matter which way this goes, but I'm gonna put it back on the way I took it off. Seemed like it was moving pretty easy from the outside, but I had all that lever of the shaft itself. So. Ooh. There we go. There's that seal. Okay, so there's two seals in here, right? There's, I don't know if you can see the, the end of the screwdriver here, but there's one right there, and there's one right there, right, you know, to their, they got them stacked. There we go. There we go. That's just, that brings right out of there. That's the, that's the ticket. Got a little grease in there. A little grease in there, it's, you know, I don't know, it wasn't leaking, but it, it certainly looks worn, so yeah, replace it. And then there's one, right, that's right in behind it there. And that one comes right out as well. Yeah, there's that. That's what that housing looks like. There's no zert on that to, to fill it up with grease, so it's gonna be a manual situation. So I'm going to clean some of this older grease out of here. There's not a whole lot in there, but get rid of that used product. I'm going to throw a little bit of the same grease that I pump into the, um, the thrust bearing on the, on the jet unit there itself. That was listed in the service manual or something like that. And uh, so I went and bought some of that. And I don't know what it is right now, but if you need to know, you could look in your service manual. I'm going to do the same here, I think. Actually, I'm just gonna pump this right onto this here. I don't need much more than that. There was obviously grease in there that the manufacturer put in and uh, it wasn't a whole lot, so I'm not gonna just totally pack this thing. Again, I'm no professional, but I can get it done. And frankly, just between you and me and the fence post here, I think this is the first time I've ever changed an oil seal. I say that this is the first time I've changed an oil seal. I think this, we did a video on changing an oil seal last year on the kinematic strum drive. Yeah, look at that right there. So uh, honestly, I gotta tell you, I was a little hesitant to to do this because like I said I've I'm not a mechanic but actually this was a lot easier than I anticipated I, I've had other jets from other manufacturers in the past and this particular project right here changing the seal out uh, the, there's no housing that comes out you, you had to drive it in all the way down the shaft and and uh, there was a lot of room for error so I guess I say so I've changed some of those out before it's been a while um, on that other brand but um, just was a hassle and they always leaked and so I didn't really want to do this but now I did and it was it's pretty darn easy really some grease in there not a whole lot but about the similar amount that then when I uh, took it off so okay let's go put this back together clean some of the goo off this inboard end of the shaft this guy is gonna go out the hole like so I think it'll probably be easier for me to put this guy back on once I drop it in the bilge. Okay, what are the chances that I'm going to be able to find this washer that I dropped? Oh, look at that. Good. One more time here. With feeling. Okay. Uh, back outside to snug that housing down to the transom. Little insulating washers and stainless steel washers. Go back in place. Okay. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Do not use one of these to drive on the nut to begin with. I mean, once you get her started, it's fine. 
but we've cross-threaded more than one nut trying that maneuver. So there's a little play there, but that, I think that was all there before. Yeah, back onto the inside and we'll put the steering linkage back together. And this just goes back on like I had it. See how easy that was? Okay, I just went right together, went right through there. So this doesn't have to go on very tight because you'll, you, you'll, you might remember seeing there was little divots in there about, about an inch back from the end of the shaft. There was a little divot and that this bolt slide right through that divot there. <clears throat> Don't tighten it too much. Although, as a good friend of mine used to say, too much is always enough. So I think that guy's name was Tut. I don't know if he's still around or not. He's the guy that taught me how to the hand coil on the FV Temptation out in Montague Strait back when I was about 21. Honestly, it looks like this guy was on here first, like that. That must be. I must have had it sandwiched in there. And then this guy was there, like so. Okay, I'll fast forward this so you don't have to watch this painful tightening of the bolt, or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll force you to watch it. Okay, back here on the business end of the boat here, and we're gonna change this uh, outboard steering control lever out and the bushings uh, top and bottom for the uh, steering pivot pins. Um, I don't think I need to change the, the, these pins. Uh, they're stainless, they're fine. While the boat has a thousand or so hours on it, you know, these jets don't. You know, we sit in here and we idle on the net and uh, you know, idle on anchor and so on and so forth. So obviously the hours don't match up with, uh, you know, the jet use and engine hours. So um, take that into account when you're replacing your your components here. Do it. Okay, so that was pretty, pretty simple. Grab my handy dandy hammer. There's corrosion happening in in there with between the stainless and the aluminum. It's fine for another you know several hundred hours at least. Let's go down below here. Uh, it doesn't seem like that's loosening up at all. So I just totally had to call the shop back in Ohio, talk to James Campbell, and uh, we did a little FaceTime um, to figure out what what the issue that I was having here. Okay, yeah, so these are bolts, there's heads in there, and th so this has gotta come off, um, otherwise you're not gonna get to them. And you probably can't see it in there, but um, down and deep in the recesses underneath this tailpipe right here is the hex head for that. So I gotta, I gotta take this thing off, this whole, tailpipe sub-assembly has got to come off. Okay, with all those nuts off, should be able to just pull this sub-assembly right off of here. Okay, yeah. Ain't nothing but a thing. Chicken wing. Okay, back with a strong persuader. There we go. She's a little shoe just bound up. There we go. Okay. Come on, girl. Let's go to the workbench. Okay, so 14 millimeter is what we need on this bad brother. And Do ya? That, that puppy. Right tool for the job. I'm gonna leave that in there until I know exactly what I'm doing here. Well, that that might take a long time. I'm going to take the other side off now. Take a look. 
see here. Barely see it We're going upside down. There's this nylon bushing in each side. And then there's a stainless bushing as well. This isn't going anywhere until this comes off. For Pete's sake. They're like, oh no, you don't have to take this piece off. Well, the hell you don't. Well, 19 millimeters. steering ram from a rod shaft from brand X that I used to have on my old boat the Iarana well you know that's why you got to change these out they look fine from the outside of course you can't even see them really but um, there's some wear so new bushings where are the new bushings wear on that one. Still sits up just a skosh. <clears throat> okay, so there's a couple of bushings in here, but I definitely don't have those, and these certainly don't need to be replaced right now anyway. How you doing? I'm gonna get it figured out by golly one way or the other. <laughs> oh. oh, I thought somebody was calling. No. I, I, I caught you on camera here is what's happened. <laughs> oh, it's in the hole. It's in the hole. Okay, there's that one. Oh, we're doing a potluck. Yeah, okay. we are. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, you can just come we over are. and eat if you want. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to bring anything. Your presence is enough. Oh, it's good to know. Trick is going to be getting this threaded onto that from down here. Let's move you over here. How's that sound? easy. That was easy as pie. Okay. Okay. That wasn't too hard. I didn't quite pay attention close enough when I was taking it apart, but it, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Okay. This is going back on. Medium strength thread locker. Time to put the steering sub-assembly back on the boat. Now we'll cook it with fire. 
17 millimeter. Time to put these back to work here. Time for a little blue goo. Okay, the, the new steering lever is going on. So is this your? Is this the only way you can remember what you did? Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> One washer either side of this ball. Last thing we got to do here is put this reverse ram back into place. Uh, the bucket on the on the bucket here. It's always a trick lining this thing up here and getting the, this tie rod end into the into this hole. Oh, for freaking fracking, fracking crackle smacker! That's it, we beat this son of a gun. Okay, so after we changed out some bushings and bonding cables and steering arms and whatnot, we're all done here. Uh, it was kind of painful at times. I don't know that any of that stuff needed to be changed. Some of those bonding cables actually were, were a bit chafed. Those should have been done. Um, if you're running one of these jets or two of them or how many ever your boat has out in some deep water where you're not in the mud and the blood and the beer and the grit and the sand, um, you could probably extend your service period out beyond the manufacturer's recommendation, but you know, talk to your mechanic about that. Don't, don't, don't trust me. Um, I would like to thank Marine Jet Power for sending me these parts so I can make you this video. Uh, hopefully you've learned something and answered some questions that you may have had. And if you, if you didn't, certainly call those folks uh, back in Ohio and they will happily take your call and try to help out any way they can. So. Um, all right, until next time, I well, hope to see you guys back on the water.